Fox News alert and back now to our top story. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton may have taken the blame yesterday for security lapses in Benghazi, but key lawmakers are now asking more questions about the security situation in Libya, including what President Obama knew and when he knew it. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham sending a short but pointed letter to the White House asking President Obama how he could possibly have been unaware, if he was, of the security worries ahead of the 9-11 terror attack in Benghazi. Senator Graham pointing to a particular incident in June of this year when terrorists blew a massive hole in the security wall surrounding the Benghazi consulate, asking shouldn't something that significant have been in the president's daily intelligence briefing. I had a chance to speak with former White House Chief of Staff Andy Card a short while ago about his experience in the Bush White House and how it really works when situations like this come up. Andy, great to have you back here. So now we have uh, Secretary of State Hillary Thank Clinton you, saying that the buck stops with her and Senator Graham asking questions about uh, where it really should stop and whether President, Bo President Obama was aware of the problems at this consulate and if not, why? Would it be typical in your experience for something this significant? There was a, an attack on the consulate in April and then again in June, they were requesting more security. It was being denied. Would it be typical for that to rise up to the president in a daily intel brief? Uh, my experience suggests that it would have been known at the White House. It would have been known in the White House Situation Room. It probably would have been known by the National Security Advisor, the Deputy National Security Advisor, the Homeland Security Advisor, the Chief of Staff, and I suspect the President. So, yes, I think that information would have gotten to the White House and probably would have gotten to the President. But not only that, I think as you came up to the anniversary of the attacks on 9-11-2001, uh, so September 11th of this year, there should have been a heightened concern about intelligence all around the world, specifically in the Arab world, given that the Arab Spring had not produced flowers but was producing a lot of weeds. And I suspect that they should have been on highest alert around any intelligence that would have suggested an attack uh, on the anniversary of that date. At the vice presidential debate, we heard Vice President Biden say, we were never told that they were demanding more security. Now, there is a question about whether he was speaking about the entire administration and just was unaware that the State Department officials had testified in great detail uh, about 36 hours earlier that they had requested more uh, security and that request was denied by state, or whether he did, as the administration now claims, mean to mean to be drawing a t distinction between the president, the vice president versus the rest of the administration. In your view, as a former chief of staff at the White House, does it matter? It, I don't think it matters very much. I suspect that the White House knew. I, I suspect very strongly that the National Security Advisor knew and the Homeland Security Advisor and probably the Chief of Staff. Now, if they didn't inform the President, shame on them. I suspect that the President and probably the Vice President did know about the nature of uh, the threats that existed around 9-11 and probably would have been told about uh, what had happened on 9-11 when we know that those attacks did happen in Benghazi and quite frankly there were the other activities around other embassies and consulates throughout the region. Now we're getting a greater picture of, of what actually went on here, Andy. I mean, we, of course, went into Libya. It was a, a President Obama decision not approved by Congress. There were all sorts of warnings about the risks of doing that. Who exactly were we helping? Were we creating a power vacuum into which al-Qaeda-affiliated groups could step? And now we find out that there were concerns by our intel officials on the ground of exactly that in the months leading up to this attack, that even the ambassador himself had concerns about the rising threat of al-Qaeda and whether he was on an al-Qaeda hit list. That in March and June, according to Eric Nordstrom, uh, the former chief security officer for our diplomats in Libya, they requested more security and they got no response from this administration. That we had two prior attacks on the Benghazi consulate, both in April, a month after the first request for security was ignored, and then in uh, June. And the pictures show the consulate with the huge hole being blown through the wall around it. And so it was clear that they were not safe. In the wake of all that, we get attacked. The ambassador gets murdered, three others get murdered, Andy. And then, as you know, five days later, Ambassador Rice, our UN ambassador, goes on all the Sunday talk shows and says this was all about a protest that we now know never took place. And the question now, in the wake of all of this, with State Depart Department saying we never believed it was about a protest, that didn't come from us, is who told Susan Rice 
to go on the Sunday talk shows and say that. In your experience, who would have given such marching orders to the U.N. ambassador? Uh, my experience, and quite frankly, it wasn't just for George W. Bush, it was for George H. W. Bush and also for President Ronald Reagan. Uh, Any time anyone from the administration went on the Sunday talk shows, uh, that communication was coordinated by the White House Communications Office and the Press Secretary's Office, and I suspect that they would have had very clear talking points and guidance, and maybe even have rehearsed some of the Q&A that would have taken place uh, with regard to any of those activities. So I don't find it credible that uh, Susan Rice uh, wasn't briefed by the White House before she went on those talk shows, and if in in fact, they knew something other than that, what they were briefing her to do, that is just not appropriate. And quite frankly, uh, it's misrepresenting something to the American people that should not have been misrepresented. So that is your perspective as somebody who was actually the chief of staff in the White House. I want to add to that the perspective of our former U.N. ambassador prior to Susan Rice, John Bolton. Listen to what he told me. Here's a little secret. Ambassadors carry out their instructions, and when they don't, they get fired. So if somebody said to her, you're going to the talk shows and this is what you're going to say, I'm sure she did it, and I would have done the same. But that begs the question about where they, if it was the White House telling her to do it, Andy, where they got the information from. State is saying they knew it was terror. They, they never believed it was about a protest. Uh, the intel community has come out in, with respect to various organizations and said they knew within 24 hours that this was a terror attack. There is some conflicting information about the head of the CIA, uh, General David Petraeus, and whether he gave an, a briefing to Congress that suggested it was about protests. So do, how do we get to the bottom of this? Well, first of all, the administration has to answer some questions, and they've been reluctant to answer the questions. And I noticed that even Senator John Kerry asked certain questions, and my understanding is that the administration has said that you'll get the answer to those questions sometime after the election, more like November 13th, uh, rather than information that would help to inform voters before they cast their ballot and on Election Day. But beyond that, I, I just find it incredible that the White House was not coordinating the message that Ambassador Rice went forward with when she was on those television talk shows. And I suspect that also testimony that is given before Congress is frequently reviewed at the White House before it's delivered. So uh, the White House should have known what was going to be said or what was suggested to be said, and they should have compared that to the reality of what they knew. And if they didn't know about what was happening in Benghazi or in other places in the Arab world around the anniversary of 9-11, uh, then the National Security Advisor or the Homeland Security Advisor uh, wasn't doing their job to make sure that the White House knew. But I suspect the White House Situation Room knew about those attacks in, in, uh, in April of 2012 and then June 6th in 2012, and they should have done a good job of anticipating kinds of challenges around the anniversary of 9-11-2012. So yeah. uh, I think that uh, clearly some people at the White House didn't want to see the reality of what was happening in the world. We expect it to be one of the topics that is likely to come up tonight. Indy Card, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Megan.